Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Proto, and as promised, this week's episode is going to be an overview of Sony Vegas on how to start editing, even if you're a complete noob. I just want to let you know this tutorial will be on the long side of things, and I won't actually be showing you how to edit a video. This is just going to be getting to know Vegas in roughly the order of things to do it in. Next week, I will probably be doing a tutorial on how to create a coherent video, but this is just going to be a breakdown. And so the Vegas Open, you agree with several sections, and whilst it might seem confusing at first, it's really not. I'll even break it down for you some more. What you're seeing on screen now is the default window layout, and on the far left you have some tabs. You have the project media, and this is where you import all of your files that you're using your project. Also, like Adobe Premiere Pro, you can also add custom bins for your footage, gameplay, VFX, and all of that other jazz by right clicking on the media bins, and then selecting create new bin. This is what I use, but most people do prefer to just leave it on all media, and now to import your media, you can do this in several ways. The first one is you can go to the top next to the lightning and click on that to import your media. And the other one is just to go to file, import, and then media. My method, which is the one I always do, and that's just going into File Explorer from Windows and just dragging your clips in from there. As mentioned, you can create bins and sort them into that. But for this tutorial and for sake of simplicity, I'm not going to be doing that today. There are also some more tabs next to the project media tab, but I'll go over those in a minute. Now with your footage already imported into Vegas, you can do one of two things. You can either drag it straight into the timeline, like so, or if you have some special media, like footage and you want to trim it before it goes into the timeline to make management so much easier, then you can just drag it into the trimmer on the right. Now the trimmer is where you can organize a single file at a time and trim it and change a few things before you import it into your timeline. You can make it smaller, basically shorter, add markers, create subclips, and more. So I'm just going to drag in my gameplay in here because I don't want to use all of it and I don't want to bother trimming it in the actual timeline. Treat this hero as a mini timeline, you can scrub through it to see if it's actually the right footage and play it as well. There's quite a lot you can actually do in here but I just want to be able to trim it. Now you can go to where you want to start and click I or set point in button and then where you want it to end you can press O or set out point. As you can see it has created a loop region and this is what it's going to be so you can change by dragging the points outwards or inwards. It's really simple stuff guys. And then you can put it into your timeline by just clicking A or the button which says add a timeline from cursor. Now on the right side you have your preview and this is a reference of what the end result will look like. Now as you can see this does show us the actual project and what it would look like if it were rendered. You can also play it by just pressing the space bar or by clicking the play icon. It will play whatever you have on your timeline. Just below that you'll also have some information on your project settings such as frame rate, resolution, what frame you're on etc. And above that you have different things that you can change such as your project properties and the rest, but then you also have a thing which says normally good auto. This is your preview quality, if you don't have a decent computer I recommend settings to draft or preview and it only changes how your preview window looks and not what the render is going to look like. So if you set it to preview and it looks crappy, don't worry your final render will still look good as long as you make sure that in the render settings you have it set to best quality. And so changing the preview doesn't affect the outcome and it only compromises pretty pictures for decent playback. On the far right you have the master audio and this would dictate your end result of your audio in one mix. This will just adjust the audio of everything in your project and it will be the rendered audio, so to speak. So you should make sure that when it's playing the bars aren't clipping red or at the bottom so you can't hear it. And next you move on to the timeline. This is where you can edit your footage or rearrange things and this is where you're going to be spending most of your time and also order files in whichever order you want. In Vegas and most other editors you do have separate tracks for audio and video now Vegas works in the layer hierarchy. Well this means that if you have tracks on top it will show up over the tracks below it and you can also insert extra video tracks by right clicking on that video track and just clicking on insert new track. The same can be done for an audio track. Right click on the audio track and click on insert new audio track. A lot of tracks guys but just bear with me. Now on the left side you do have other things that will tell you the time in the video so I've got mine set to tell me in hours, minutes, seconds and then frames. Since my project is running at 60 FPS, it will go all the way up to 60 and then loop to the next second, instead of doing it in milliseconds. For the more observant of you, you might have noticed that you do also have these time indicators on the X beside it, and just quickly you can zoom in and out of the timeline by either pressing up or scrolling up to zoom in, and pressing the down key or scrolling down to zoom out. Really simple stuff. Clicking on the timeline at different parts will move the playhead or the point into the video. If you drag just above the timeline, you'll also notice that a selection occurs, and this is called a loop region. Same with the trimmer, the loop region will dictate what area of the video is going to be rendered and what you're going to be playing back. Again, you can make it shorter or longer by dragging the yellow points in the timeline. And on the left side, we have some tracks and more things you can change. 
when you get the media onto the timeline, you always want to make sure that you disable resample. And by default, Vegas interpolates the frame rate of the clips and tries to match it to some certain settings. What it does though is it creates that really crappy ghosting effect because many people have variable frame rates, especially when you're using gameplay. So you can disable resample by downloading a script that I have on another video and that will disable for every piece of media in the project. Or you can just right click on a file, go to properties and then disable resample. After that, just click OK. As I was saying, for video files you have an opacity slider as well to make things more transparent. So setting it down to 70% will make it 70% opaque. And then beside that you can also change the compositing mode of the track to add screen and a bunch of other things. Which is just often a stylistic choice but it's often used for stock footage. And then you also have a mute button. Now what this does is it makes it as if the track is invisible from the project as if you've deleted it. But you can still go back to it and edit it. And beside that you also have a solo button. Now what this does is it makes it the only track, in this case it will be a video track, that's seen if it's enabled. You can also disable it by just clicking on it again. And lastly on the video track you have track effects. Now normally you would have to add an effect to each individual media. But applying effects to this means that any video on the track will have the same effects put onto it. It's a bit like an adjustment layer for a single track. Now I personally use this for all my color corrections since I want to have all my gameplay color corrected the same way. And it really would be a tedious thing to go through and add to every single media individually. Now taking a look at the audio tracks just below you can change the entire volume of the track. By dragging the slider either to the left to make it quieter or to the right to make it louder. Now what's good about this is that it'll affect the whole track and so for example you can change the whole gameplay volume without having to change it for each track and you can also pan. Now what pan does is it allows you to change whether the audience is hearing the sound. By default it's set to center which means I hear it in both ears and if you want to push to the left it means I hear it more in the left ear and if you drag it to the right they'll play the sound more in the right position. I really can only see this being useful if you're doing something like indie movies where you want to have gunfire go around and to hear in your left ear and snapping in your right ear. These are just examples. And then you have also one similar to the video track, which is track effects, mute, and solo. If you want to add more media, you could just do it the normal way, or you could go into the Explorer tab by clicking on the Explorer, and notice that's basically like the Explorer you've got in Windows. And this you can select your footage by finding it and double clicking on it to import it. I personally don't like this method because I find it to be less viewed and more stale, and so I just use the regular Windows File Explorer and import it that way. As well as that, you can create text and media directly in Sony Vegas, and for this, head into your Media Generators tab on the left of the project, and then click on Media. Or at least the media you want to create. Now, for example, I'm going to create some text, I'm just click on Titles and Text, and I like the normal one, so I'm just going to grab the default one and drag that onto my timeline. And as you'll notice, the window opens. Now, from here, I can change the font, size, text itself, placement, color, and all of that jazz, as well as what I normally do is I add some shadow and a black outline, like the stroke option in Photoshop. Again, these are all stylistic choices, but it's all up to you on what you want to do. Now for the timeline, there are also some other tools. You have the repeat, play, pause, stop, go to start, and end, and then go to the next slash last frame. And besides that, you also have some actual tools, which are the normal edit tool, shuffle, slip, slide, time stretch, and the split tool. The ones you're normally going to be using are just the normal edit tool, because there are some shortcuts for other things. I'll get onto those in a minute. And then you have other tools such as markers and ripple deletion. But with the gameplay already on the timeline, I can trim it by dragging the ends in, or just split it at certain parts by either using the split trim tool, or by putting my playhead at the part I want to be trimmed, and then just pressing S. As you can see, it's split the clip and it's now in two parts. And then I can also make things go in fast or slow motion by holding down control, going to the end of the clip, and then dragging the ends outwards for slow motion, and dragging it in for quick motion, or fast motion. Now there are more sophisticated ways of doing this, which is what I use, but it is a bit more confusing and so I'll just leave you with this for now. Just quickly before that, you can change the opacity or volume for any audio track by going to the top of it and dragging down. You can also fade in audio and video by going to the end of the clip or beginning and moving the cursor towards the top of it. Now if you drag inwards, it'll create a fade, which will make the audio, video or whatever fade in and out. For the sake of this tutorial, I'll imagine that you need to cut out the boring part of the gameplay so I'll just press again to split the clip at that part, select the clip by pressing on it and then pressing delete. With that done, I'll drag the clip beside each other so that they're right next to each other. And now if we play it back, you can see that it's just a hard cut next to the part of the gameplay. Often, I like to do it this way, but in Vegas, you also have the option to add more things for a stylistic choice. And these are called transitions. Now going into the transitions tab, you'll also see there's an absolute crap ton of things you can do in here. These are things you can put in between clips or at the start to make things going into the scene a lot less choppy. For example, you can select the linear wipe for those swooshes, 
Flash for light leaks, and Dissolve, which is the one I use mostly for like different fades. For example, fade to black or fade to white. Mess around with these, and also if you find one that you like, click on it, and you should have a little preview playing of what it will look like. For this tutorial, I'm just going to be using the Dissolve one. I'll drag it in between these two clips, and when I let go, I'll have a nice fade. Also, if I go into the video effects tab, these are filters or effects that you can put into your video files. This is where you can add color correction, blurs, green screen, chroma key, and a ton more. Again, mess around with these and there are previews if you click on them. And if you want to apply it straight onto certain ones, you can either drag them straight onto the clip and then change the parameters. Or you can do what I do and that's go to the lower side of the clip and there should be two things. One is pan crop and the other is video effects. Click on the one on the far right and it will open up a bunch of other effects that you have access to. To add them, select them and then just click add and then OK. This opens up another tab where you can change the settings to better alter the video to make it how you want it to look. Now for color correction and more on settings, I have a dedicated tutorial in the description on color correcting your footage. Once you're done, just click close. And for the last part of the demo, it's going to be the pan crop icon. Now for pan crop allows you to change the size, rotation, and if you click on the crop icon next to the video effects, you'll see that it opens up another window. Make sure the cursor is at the start of the mini timeline at the bottom so that it doesn't change in the middle of the video, and drag it outwards to make it smaller, and inwards to make it bigger. You can also rotate it by going inside the circle and dragging it. You can also move the clip by simply moving it in any direction. But you should know that this is the opposite of what you do to it. For example, if you move it left, it'll go right or affect anything in such a way. Think of it this way, the F is the whole scene of that footage. And if you rotate it left, you're making the video itself do the opposite. You can also change a few things by right click and then you can restore it to where it started from. By just pressing restore, center it by pressing center and flip it by either pressing flip horizontal or flip vertical. The timeline at the bottom is where you can create keyframes, so if you want to change it and all, all you have to do is move it to different parts where the cursor is, and just change some parameters. Now if we play it for example, it will do use keyframes by transitioning from the first to the next. I will try not to confuse you with this since it is only a breakdown, but the best way to learn is by taking these tips I'll give you, and by messing around with it yourself. Now, as done before, just select a loot region of where you want it to render, and then go to File and Render. I have made a render settings tutorial on the best settings, so that too will be in the description. Now I'm going to select my preset and just click Render. I've already made a tutorial on mixing audio, rendering, color creation, and more, so check the description for some more in depth stuff on that. Anyway, guys, hopefully, this video has been way more informative than complicated, and if you want, I can make a separate video on how I create my videos inside of Vegas. Leave a like if you have enjoyed and if it helped you out. And if it didn't, then leave a dislike. If I missed anything out, or if you have any other questions, just drop them down in the comments below. And if you think I can improve my videos anyway, again, drop a comment down below. Subscribe to stay up to date with all my new content. This has been Proto. Adios!